Everybody bless and share this broadcast. Invite your father. Listen, everybody, I'm dealing with something real powerful. If you take notes, write this down. The virtue of a woman 
is tied to her excitement about Jesus. The virtue of a woman is tied to her excitement about Jesus. Your excitement about Jesus is what's going to protect your virtue. <clears throat> Every day you have to make a decision to be excited about Jesus. Every day. You have to decide that you're going to spend your passion on Jesus. Making him happy. Inspiring his vision on the earth so that he can look at you and know that he can use you and you can be the one that he can flow through. Because if you remember, he needed to get rid of Haman, but Esther was the answer. <clears throat> he needed to get rid of Nabal, but Abigail was the answer. He needed to get rid of the serpent. The woman was the answer. But she didn't answer the call. Imagine that, saints. Have you ever thought about it? That this woman was created to destroy that very serpent that destroyed her? <clears throat> Why did the sh serpent show up when Adam was on the scene? Because Adam, that wasn't his assignment. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You heard that? Ain't that crazy? That was not an Adam's assignment to destroy that serpent. That was her assignment. Whatever you are assigned to destroy is going to confront you. That's why every man, you must know this. If you ever get in a relationship with a woman, she got her own demons that she got to fight. You got your demons that you got to fight. And when I say that, I don't mean that you're struggling. I mean that the spirit know who it's been attached by Satan to oppose. You understand? Let me give you a reference here. Job's wife, she had a demon. <clears throat> she had a demon that was fighting her. The demon beat her. So now she started telling her husband, Job, curse God and die, because that's what the demon told her. So now she's transferring what has become a reality to her. She can't give her husband godly counsel because she done left godly counsel. She can't give her husband uh, worship and submission because she left worship and submission. She's in a place of forget God. So she tells her husband, forget God. You can only speak from the location where your heart is. So here's the thing about this. Job was not battling with this demon that Job's wife was battling with. We also see that uh, we see that in uh, Job's life. The men of God, they have their own demons that they battle. <clears throat> There's their own demonic spirits that's going to oppose them as men. And that's going to be different from the woman, because remember, according to where you are, according to what type of spirit uh, has been assigned from your birth, that's going to be the spirit that opposes you. The serpent spirit was not opposing Adam. It was opposing the woman. Which shows you that women have their own personalized demons that they have to overcome. Woman of God is not connected to your children. Woman of God is not connected to nobody. It's your own personalized demon that you have to defeat yourself. That's your assignment. And every woman has been given grace to defeat that spirit. Over 90% of women won't. Over 90% of women will fall to the demon that they've been anointed to destroy. And it's not always because of the lack of knowledge. It's because of the lack of loyalty. It's because of the lack of excitement. If you remember what I just said, the secret to the woman's virtue 
protecting her virtue is excitement for Jesus. Excitement for Jesus. Excitement for Jesus. That's going to be the secret to every woman's life. If you lose excitement for Jesus, no matter what type of woman you are, you'll fall. You'll lose. Saints, do you know when you go before Jesus, you can't throw him your breasts? You can't throw him your chest? Huh? You can't lick his feet. You can't lick his neck. You can't seduce him. So there's obviously going to be something about you that he's going to let you get into. Hold on. Shoot, I got, I got my fan. <laughs> Excuse me. I got my fan on in my, <laughs> got my fan on in my room. You know what I'm saying dry you out. <clears throat> I need over 50 people to share this broadcast on uh, Facebook. I need over 50 people to share this broadcast on Facebook. So you got to stay excited for Jesus as a woman. That's going to protect your virtue. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 31. Uh, what do you believe when the Bible said that the woman is the weaker vessel? What do you believe about that? You need to know this as a woman. If you're a woman of God, you need to know this. What, what do you think that the Bible is talking about when he said a woman is the lesser vessel? Or not the lesser vessel, the weaker vessel. Huh? Now, saints, we can get all spiritual, right? Um, and we can liken, oh, weaker vessel mean, dot, dot, dot. But listen, what does weak mean? You don't have to be no educated student. If you, you can be blind Bartimaeus and know what weak mean, you know what I'm saying? So you know how people try to preach and say, hey, it don't mean that she's weak because women are strong. You know, women are so strong. You know, some preachers be trying to get them a booty call. That's what they be trying to do. That's how preachers preach when they're thirsty. When they're trying to get them some, some, some legs. After service, that's how they preach. And woman is strong. I know they talk about us women, but, but woman is so strong. They are the ones that create us and bear us in their bellies for nine months. You don't understand the strength of a woman. A woman is stronger than you know. She's stronger than a man. A man can't even. Where's that in the Bible? That's not in the Bible. It sound good. That'll get you some legs. But that's not going to get you deliverance on a woman's life. But they'll tell you that stuff. They'll tell you. You, you know they be telling us that in, in the church. Because he up there trying to look for a good wife. He trying to impress all the ladies in the church. Oh, women are stronger than you know. You, you don't understand a woman. She's stronger than us men. But the Bible said that the woman is the weaker vessel. So what does it mean that she the weaker vessel? A woman needs covering. Why does she need covering? Because Satan is after her mind. Even a woman don't have to do nothing in a day for Satan to target her heavily. Satan can take a woman from five minutes of ecstasy to 10 hours of depression. Satan can take, you heard what I just said? He can take a woman from 30 minutes of pleasure to 30 years of bitterness. No, see, I, I, this Jesus having a talk with you woman on here. You know, there's nothing to be ashamed about. 
This is just the Holy Ghost what he want to talk about. Because he care. And the fact that he all making us carriers of kingdom demonstration and he letting us move in the blessing and the favor of God. <clears throat> you need to know the spirits that's going to face you. And so that when it does happen, you won't be ignorant to how to deal with that time in your life because it will happen. Satan can take a woman from 24 hours of happiness to 24 hours of wrong thinking. And every woman must understand the retaliation of the devil on your life. That every success makes you a target for retaliation. Write that down. Every success makes you a target of retaliation. Here's what I'm saying. And this is very powerful. Every time you obey God, Satan mark you. Every time you listen to your man of God, Satan mark you. You know what he's saying? <clears throat> Let me see next time. I know you did what God said today. But I'm going to try you again tomorrow. I know I'm going to get you. And the mockery that Satan has for a woman is very disrespectful. He disrespects women. Satan thinks that women are stupid. That's why he fights you so much. He thinks you're a dummy. Satan has been disrespectful to women since Genesis. It was an obvious reference to show you how he thinks and how he demeans women. You don't have to listen to a rap song and how they call your names. You can just watch Genesis and see the disrespect of Satan. How could you be royalty and he put depression on you? How could you be royalty and he put sickness on you? He disrespecting you. How could you be royalty and he up there got you missing financial moments and missing moments where God trying to place large money in your hands? He disrespecting you. How come he pitch you with men that don't even care about you or pitch you with family members that talk behind your back? It's, it's reference how Satan feels about the female gender, that he has no regard, no respect, no love, and that he's very envious. And there's a reason behind that. Those of you all that's close to me, you know the story behind Lucifer. <clears throat> I remember Jesus speaking to me and telling me, the story behind Lucifer, who Lucifer is, what Lucifer is all about, what Lucifer assignment is, and why Lucifer has such a deep hatred towards women. If you notice, Jesus didn't say that um, a man was just going to come on the scene. He said, I'm going to get a woman. And this woman, she shall bear a seed that shall crush your head. But Jesus was, uh, he was really referring to the fact, I'm about to use a female gender against you. That's what's going to fight you. I'm going to use a female gender to oppose you. I'm going to use a female gender to pit your kingdom to shame. Why? That was Jesus' way of giving females back justice. Who did Jesus speak to when he first rose from the dead? The female. Because he was giving back females their dignity. Which means that you were created to hear from Jesus first, not the devil. <clears throat> You're not supposed to hear from Satan first. You're supposed to hear from Jesus first. Because when Jesus rose from the dead, they heard from Jesus first. Before Peter did, before any of the disciples did, they was hearing from Jesus. Jesus was speaking to the woman, which shows you that women are supposed to hear from Jesus first. Every day of your life, you as a woman have to make sure you hear from Jesus first. Don't hear from your bank account. Don't hear from other sources. Don't hear other reports. Don't hear from other channels, other mediums. Hear from Jesus. If every woman will hear from Jesus there will be no struggling woman in the earth. Women struggle 
because they do not hear from Jesus on a matter, on a situation. Because Jesus will tell you, don't do this. Don't say this. <clears throat> don't go in this direction. I don't want you to talk with this person. I don't want you to hang here. I don't want you to look on your phone for this. I don't want you to read this message. I don't want you to see this, uh, this video, this picture, this movie, this TV show. I don't want you to connect with this individual. He'll speak to you. As a woman, Jesus has a very sacred place of communication where he talks with you when nobody is, is a, it, it, nobody knows. And he whispers a lot of times to you as a woman. Sometimes he'll tell you, daughter, I want you to praise me right now because Satan decided by this time Tomorrow, you're going to be in deep depression. And sometimes you don't do it as a woman. You sit right there, you're quiet. Tomorrow I'll come you in deep depression. And Jesus done told you. No, no, he always give you solution. He always going to give you solution before pollution come. He always going to tell you how to deliver yourself as a woman. He always going to let you know. And sometimes <clears throat> you might not be listening. You might not be paying attention, but Jesus will prepare you as a woman. You're supposed to hear from Jesus first. Jesus got so much blessings that he wants to give to a woman. But oftentimes, it's not even the devil stopping you. It is your mind that's stopping you as a woman. Your mind can be a wilderness or a river. Your mind can be a well or a dam. Your mind can be in a famine or it can be in a land flowing with milk and honey. Your mind can be rich or poor. It can be wealthy or in poverty. It can be sick or healed. It can be wise or foolish. It can be strong or weak. It can be light or darkness. It can be hope or depression. It can be strength or discouragement. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 31. Let's go to verse 17. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. Look at this. This is so powerful in so many ways. It's telling you, woman, that you got the power to take control over your mind. Your loins are really your mind. When you see the Bible talk about loins, most time it's dealing with your thoughts, your mind. That's why Peter said, gird up the loins of your mind. These are your meditation. Your loins is where you're positioned. Now, if you remember... Or your loins is where you're contemplating stuff. It's your memory. It's your thought life. It's what you're thinking about. Your loins is where you have, uh, you have your decision making. It's the headquarters of your decisions. It says she girded up, she girdeth her loins with strength, meaning that she allows the power of Jesus Christ to flow through her loins. She allows the power of Jesus Christ to flow through her mind. She allows the power of God to 
dominate her mind, have rulership over her mind. The power of God is anointing her mind, which shows us that she has the mind of Christ because that's the mind of the anointed one in his anointing. So she has the mind of Christ. That's verse 17. And watch, it says, she strengtheneth her arms. Why does her arms be strengthened in this text? Because <clears throat> what this woman is having the power to make the decisions that God wants her to make. She's strong enough if God tells her to disconnect from somebody, she does it. If God tells her not to go revisit a place, she never returns. If God tells her to drop that friend, she drops him. If God tells her not to answer the phone, she doesn't answer the phone. <clears throat> so, we see overall the power of God is moving on this woman for her to be untouched by the devil. Let's go to verse 18. It says, she perceived <clears throat> that her merchandise is good. So God is giving her wisdom. He's given her the understanding of how to prosper. It's powerful. He's letting her know what not to try to pursue. What's not going to bring her financial wealth. What's a waste of time. <clears throat> Remember, I was telling you how when people try to become your business partner and be like, hey, let's start a business together. Let's start selling this together. Look, it says she perceives if that her merchandise is good. So she know whether it's good or evil, if, if it's right or bad, if it's going to bring success or not. She knows whether it's a waste of time or it's God's will. She knows whether she should engage in this or she should disconnect from this. Now, here's this statement that I want you to remember. Her candle goeth not out by night. Now, this is very powerful. It says that her candle goeth not out by night. So she's never off point. I'm the greatest of all time teaching. I, I, don't, I don't care what nobody say, man. <laughs> I'm the greatest of all time. I'm 2019, 2018, I'm, I'm the greatest of all time teaching the word. I teach the word every day, 24-7. Ten straight hours of teaching. Nobody, nobody ever did that in the world. Nobody. Nine hours straight teaching. Then I did 10 hours straight teaching nonstop. If you don't believe that the presence of God living a man like that, you deserve to go to hell with no draws, not even the gasoline ones. <clears throat> yeah, you understand what I'm saying? You deserve to go to hell with no draws on. Them demons going to be doing porno tapes with you because that. Yeah. Now, look at this. Her candle goeth not out by night. So not even satanic atmospheres can disturb her fire for God. Oh, Jesus. Even when she gets around the enemy, she still does not become God's enemy. Even when she gets around wickedness, she does not get tainted by wickedness. Even when she gets around the fearful, she never gets fearful. When she gets around poverty, she never gets broke. When she gets around sickness, she never gets diseases. She's not affected by her atmosphere. She is her own atmosphere. Every woman must always remember this. She says, I don't, I don't, I don't flow in people's atmosphere. I create my own. And if I don't, if I can't create my atmosphere alone, 
on, on my own, I create, listen, I'm going to find a way to create my atmosphere. I always been like that. That's why I made it. That's why I made it this far in the anointing and the glory of God. I create my own atmosphere. If you going to fall out, betray God, I ain't going to fall out with you. I always had that mindset in ministry since I was a teenager. That's why I made it this far. And I ain't made it this far. I already made it. I'll never fail God. How can I fail God? I'm too powerful. I'm too anointed. I'm too submissive to the grace of God. I won't disrespect him. Why well, am I going to disrespect somebody that never disrespected me? Jesus respect me as his king. I respect him as my king. Why would I disrespect him when he, he give me the honor and call me his king? He called me a God. Why would I disrespect him? You got to be supernaturally stupid to fail God. Supernaturally stupid. Say, Father, I receive not supernaturally stupid. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I receive not supernaturally stupid on my life. I receive it not. Father, right now, I take not the spirit of supernaturally stupid. Wow. Let's go to verse 22. <clears throat> it says, she maketh her, herself coverings and tapestry. There's about five niggas about to give me a ref reference of what I need to drink for my voice. <laughs> Don't write me no daggone reference to what I need to drink for my voice. Don't do it. About five of y'all, you think about it. Don't write me no reference to what I need for my voice. I'm going to be all right. You hear me hooping and hollering up in here. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> Let's go to verse 22. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 22. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple, which is royal covering. She's in royal attire because she's royalty. If you don't get this revelation as a woman, Satan going to disrespect you. Don't let him disrespect you. See, if that woman knew in the garden that Satan was disrespecting her, she would not have ate from the tree. Satan made it look like God was disrespecting her. You remember that? He said, why he won't tell you? Why he won't let you eat from the tree? What he trying to hide from you? He made her feel like God was disrespecting her, but really he was disrespecting her. <clears throat> she would not have ate from that tree if she knew that that tree was really Satan disrespecting her and saying, hey, you're not really no woman of God. You're not really no virtuous woman. So I'm going I'm to I'm make you look like a Jezebel, a fool, and bop, 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 bop. That's what he did. Since that day, so many women have been trying to recover. So many women. <clears throat> Once you cross over in the anointing, don't let this realm ever bully you. Don't let this realm bully you. I don't want to hear nobody in JHM town so I'm trying. That word is illegal in this ministry. If you try, you might as well just serve Satan fully. Because trying ain't going to get you nowhere. 
trying is Satan's deception to make you feel like you're doing something to keep yourself when really you just being lazy. You won't surrender your daggone life to the Holy Ghost. And you got too much demons in your daggone mind running your thoughts. You got too much demons running your emotions and you just don't want to admit it because you got so much Bible scriptures to hide behind to make you believe that you Holy Ghost filled. Don't lie to yourself. That's the key to becoming great. <clears throat> You, you, you know when your mind is all over the place. You know when your mind is a bozo. You know when your mind is a trickster. Trick you right out. Oh, I ain't struggling. You got all type of daggone thoughts in your head. You got all type of demons talking to you. Demon just talking to you just like that. You're like, mm, mm, uh, ew, uh, ew. Demon just talking in your ear. You don't even have a hedge. You don't even have a comeback. You don't even have the, the boldness to say, get out of my face, Satan. I know you're trying to trick me, make me miss the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit want me to walk in love. Holy Spirit want me to walk in, in, in kindness. Holy Ghost want me to walk in submission. You're trying to take me out of the Spirit, trying to take me out of my anointing, take me out of my wisdom, take me out of my joy my peace, my wealthy place. So verse 22 is talking about the royal linen. Every woman, you must understand this. The royal linen. Her clothing is silk and purple. I believe that all women are bipolar to some degree. I believe that that's the curse that Satan put on all women. I, I, I don't care who you is. I believe that all women are bipolar to some degree. And I mean that for children too. I mean babies. I mean grown women. I mean mothers. I mean wives. I mean prophetess. I mean apostles because now we got a lot of women apostles. I believe every woman is bipolar to some degree. Every single woman. I don't, I, I really don't care what you say. Because this is the spirit that's going to fight every woman because that's what happened to the first woman. I'm not saying that you bipolar because you crazy. I'm saying you bipolar when you step into the nature of the woman that was crazy. You heard? You have an Eve nature. You have an Esther nature. Esther was a queen. Eve was a trap queen. She was a queen that was trapped by the serpent. She was a queen that was trapped by a lie. So if you ever get lazy and you step into the same cocoon that Eve was in, you'll step into the same decisions and the same mindset. Let's go to verse 25, chapter 31, verse 25. It says, strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. So watch this. Your rejoicing as a woman is not always for the present. Meaning that what you're looking to make you happy is not always going to take place in the now. It's going to take place in the future. This is why a woman must have endurance. Because it says strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. Time to come. Time. Time. Remember I told you that there's an anointing for time? So there's a time. Where you, where, where you shall rejoice. So. 
What happens when you're not in that time where that rejoicing is really made manifest by God? You have to do it by faith. You, you heard? You got to do it by virtue because there may not be things taking place visibly that cause you to rejoice. But you're rejoicing by wisdom. Because you're wise enough to know that the Bible said rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say Apostle Paul said that. I believe in Philippians chapter 4. So you have enough wisdom to know this is what God wants me to do. You're not rejoicing because you're hearing good news all around. Because sometimes you're hearing bad news. Your credit score just dropped. You owe another bill. You got more bills than you got paycheck. But you're rejoicing because you're hiding in the secret place of the Most High God. And you know that he never failed anybody and he surely ain't going to fail you. You're not going to mess up his reputation. Once you get a revelation of that, you'll understand that God never wants you broke. He never wants you struggling because his reputation is on the line. Now look at verse 26. She opened her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Remember I teach you that woman should always be kind. Remember I teach you that virtue is kindness. Now you see where I get my wisdom from. It's all rooted in the Bible. I make a lot of statements. If you, if, if I was ever to take the time to show you, my stuff is in the Bible. I talk about kindness, building that as a woman, because it's right here in the word of God. Her tongue is the law of kindness. Oh, and let me say this. A woman wasn't created to argue. That's powerful. <laughs> you ever seen a woman arguing on social media or arguing in any type of place? That's a woman that really don't know who she is. God didn't create woman to argue. <clears throat> That's not your anointing. That's not even who you are. You're a queen. queen queens ain't got time for that. You are inspiration. You're not a debate. You see that? So, so you wasn't created to argue as a woman. See, I'm giving you biblical correction so that you can know the standard that you've been called to. That's why when you argue, you feel so bad. Because that's not you. That's not your assignment. You wasn't created to debate. You wasn't created to hate. <clears throat> That's not your identity in Christ. You're not supposed to argue. That's not your assignment at all. You as a woman, you've been given the grace to open your mouth with wisdom. Meaning God, watch this. If Abigail was a stupid woman, she would have went go argue with King David. And David would have killed her. But she calmed him down, knew how to speak soothing words to him. And David took her home and gave her something. Jesus. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Proverbs chapter 31. Look what it says. Verse 26. She opened her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. See, divine women know how to talk. Divine women carry the spirit of God in their mouth. And their mouth would change the whole atmosphere of an altercation, an issue, It'll change the whole atmosphere of a judgment, 
Um, it'll change her whole atmosphere of uh, the season that she's in. She openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. We see that with Abigail. Abigail spoke words. Remember the Seraphonician woman? Look how she spoke the right words to Jesus. Jesus said, this children's bread is not for dogs. So he called the woman and her daughter two dogs. Look how she responds to Jesus, which it should be every uh, woman's goal. Look how she responds to him and said, even us. We desire to eat from the crumbs from the table. We desire to have the crumbs. Just let us have a little taste of what you give off. Let us have a little encounter with you. We'll take what you give us. We're not even going, we're not even mad that you call us dogs. We will be a dog for you any day. I'm paraphrasing. That was a virtuous woman. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something that nobody ever preached before. In one moment, she went from the Seraphonician woman to the surrendered woman. In one moment, she went from the Seraphonician woman to the virtuous woman. In one moment. In one moment. In one moment. In one moment, she switched the location of her identity. Jesus didn't see her as a Seraphonician woman. He saw her as a worshiper. Because she opened her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Let's go to verse 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household. And eateth not the bread of idleness. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. She looketh well to the ways of her household. So every woman is a protector. We often talked about a woman being protected. But women are protectors. That's why you're so protective of your child. Y'all ever had children that sleep wild? You got to catch them before they fall off the bed. Child, be You be hey, 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 hey! Get, 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 get back on this bed. You don't fell asleep. You up there? She over on the other side. You over here? You over here like this here? You up there sleeping? She over here. She done left. <sighs> you catch her before before her head touched the ground. She done fell. <laughs> she done fell all the way down. Her, her neck was just about to touch the floor. You up there. You done fell asleep. Hold her. She done... <sighs> she, she committed suicide in her sleep. She committed suicide in her sleep. Suicide in her sleep. He's supposed to be a protector. And eat not the bread of idleness. You know what I mean? The devil can't access your mind. Idleness means that you ain't doing nothing and the devil is doing everything. That's what idleness means. Idleness means that you off duty and Satan on duty. You done clocked out, Satan done clocked in. He on assignment, you left your assignment. That's what idleness means. The bread of idleness, meaning that it has become the food that you're digesting. 
It has become a part of your system because when you eat something, it's in your system. So the bread of idleness means that now you're eating. This has become a part of your system. It's inside of your body. It's inside of your mind. It's in, it is inside of your system. So the bread of idleness is now you're eating stuff that's demonic. Remember when she ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that was eating from the bread of idleness. Wow. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. It says, favor is deceitful. You know what that means? You can lose everything that you have produced in one moment. You can have 364 days of virtue. 364 days of submission. 364 days of honor. And you can lose in one moment. Favor is deceitful. Meaning it's very delicate. You may think that you got it forever and you can lose it in a moment. Favor is deceitful. It'll make you think that it's going to stay with you. And before you know it, you can't even trace it. When Jesus made me a, a boss, a leader, I started having a different outlook on favor. Because I noticed how when Jesus would turn away from a person, I didn't want nothing to do with them no more. It don't, it don't matter if I like them. I ain't like them no more. <clears throat> I didn't have a desire to talk with them no more. I didn't want to say nothing to them. It was just nothing. And Jesus would tell me, son, I'll let you carry my heart. That's how favor is. When somebody lose it, like Saul, I ain't want to talk to him no more. He did everything. He wouldn't go pray. He wouldn't go try to uh, get me to speak. I wouldn't say nothing to him. That's in the Bible. There was a reason why Judas like kind of committed suicide in a sense. There's different versions, but one said that he hung himself or like he broke his neck because he was tormented. The favor was deceitful. He thought that he was so close to Jesus and then boom, Jesus. Jesus had nothing to do with him. Favor is deceitful. So if, <clears throat> if you ever casualize favor, you'll lose it. If you ever think that favor is always going to be there, it can create a laziness in you. See, saints, I don't know if you know this. I'm the same prophet Joshua preaching the word. I was doing this years and years ago. I would take time and still release revelations of the spirit to you. I'm still doing it today. I could have said, hey, the Lord gave me a big house. I'm going to just relax now. I could have said, oh, the Lord just gave me a, a vehicle, a debt-free vehicle. I'm going to just enjoy my life. I'm going to go on vacation because I can go on vacation. <laughs> I could say, you know, the Lord done delivered my life. I got a family. I got a baby. I can just. Chill and enjoy. I ain't got to talk to these niggas or none of that. I ain't niggas. I could say that, but I never did. Every single day, I'm in there faithfully consistent with God. Never changing. Never missing. Never being lazy, but producing what the Holy Ghost has required me to do. 
produce. Because I don't casualize favor and I know favor is deceitful. I can lose that favor with the father if I don't want to remain who I was. And let me tell you something. Some of you all, you do stuff to get favor, then you don't do it no more. That's why your favor is dying. It's dying. If you ever want to see somebody decline in favor, it was first somebody that declined in faithfulness to God. It's not that the favor just declined. They declined. In their faithfulness to God. You got to keep doing. What the Holy Spirit revealed to you. Unlock the favor. Because there's something that everybody can do. That makes Jesus like you all the more. If a man has back issues. And. He goes to chiropractors. Them niggas done stepped on his back. He up there. Ah! Are you all right? No, I ain't all right. That hurt. But you owe us $200 for this visit. We are chiropractors. $200 for what? You just ate town, stumped my back. And I ain't, my back is, my back is still out. Well, you're going to have to pay us another $200 if you want me to step on it again. Step on it again. I need my $200. Or I got a security right here. You, 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 you going to make me pay the $200? I ain't even. You going to pay us this $200. I done stepped on your back. I almost broke my ankles when I did it because your back hard as a concrete. Now you disrespecting my back. I'm about to call security right now. Never, now nah, don't call no security. I'm dealing with you. Now I'm about to let you deal with the security because I can't handle you. You got a concrete back. All you got to do is turn around and hit me in the face. And I done got a concussion. He done paid $200 on the books. The man stepped on his back. His back issue ain't fixed. His back issue is not solved. Okay? He done went to another chiropractor. And the next chiropractor did the same thing. He's still in pain. So he meets a woman. And him and the woman go on a date. The date went well. He said, well, maybe I shouldn't marry her. Nah, never mind. She might got mustaches. Maybe. I don't know. Devil trying to tell him all type of stuff. So one day, he, she invited him inside the house. And he like, ooh, Jesus. I'm going to pick down my Bible for this one. Mm -hmm. He walk inside of the house and when he don't even know, she don't even know when she turn around, he walk in like this. She had chains rattling. So she looked back and he just calmed down. Oh, I had to brush something off my shirt. Hey, how you doing? You got tea in here? Water? <laughs> you got tea? Water? What you, what you got in yours? Uh, you got a glass of water, huh? Cold water? Room temperature? She turned around. She walking towards, he all excited. He bobbling. She turned back again. She says, oh, oh, God. No, it ain't nothing. It's just nothing. I just had to fix my shirt. My shirt, you know, that's all it was. <laughs> so they talking. All of a sudden, she tell him to lay down. So when she tell him to lay down, he got excited again. You say lay down? She said, yeah, I'll be right back. He in the room. She heard a noise going off in the living room. She said, baby, are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. That's not... It's not nothing, baby. I ain't doing nothing. You know, I just had to take my shirt off. I'm fixing my shirt. She said, okay. 
So she took a little while. She said, I'm just going to go to the restroom real quick. He said, okay. He in the room shaking just like that. She said, baby, are you all right? He said, why? That ain't nothing. I just was, I just was stretching. That's all I was doing. But he excited. But she done told him to lay down. One of the children woke up. She didn't, he didn't know that she had children because when he came into the house, the children were sleeping in the room. So he up there. He realized that he made a loud sound when he did it. So he was. Do my thing when I do my thing. Do my thing when I do my thing. Do my thing when I do it. <laughs> I can't. I came to get it pumping. I came to get it pumping. <laughs> I came to get it in. <laughs> she came to bring a friend. Pump, pump, pump it up. <laughs> do me, do me, do me. Do my thing and I do my thing. Do my thing. The little children that came out of the room, she thought she put the child to sleep. She gave him a little, you know, thing, thing. Child sleeping. Thought the child was going to be asleep. The child done peeked up because they heard a the little rattle. Because he ain't doing it fast like this. Because when he did it fast, she would hear him. So he didn't do my thing and do my thing. Do my thing and do my thing. The little child peeped inside the room. When he see the child, he said, hey, what you doing? She looked at him wide-eyed. She ran inside the bathroom where her mama was and said, there's a man inside the room shaking his neck. <laughs> he ran outside the room, said, hey, I didn't know you had children. She said, yeah, I got children. I'm coming out the bathroom right now. He hear the water going off in the bathroom, water. And the water is confusing because it has nothing to do with what she's doing. So the the room does not have the 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 bathroom does not have a shower in there. It just have the little water. So it's so he's ready to explain himself, but at the same time he's confused. He doesn't know if this is going to mess up his moment. She, she done told him to lay on the bed. Now look at this here. He find a way to get out of it. He tell her, he said, listen, baby, I'm sorry. I, I got excited because, you know, I just got to get my body in order because I've been having these lower back pains. So he go inside. She said, oh, you've been having lower back pain. She said, do you know that I specialize? I've been going to school for chronic back pain. I, I know how to get massages. I had a dream to start my own masseuse organization. He said, ooh. So she turned around. He started. And, and then she said, what that noise is? He said, nothing. Uh, can we go inside the room? <laughs> can we go inside the room? All right. I, I don't know what you keep hearing. Can we go inside the room? She said, yeah, sure. So she laid him down on the bed. And she said, hold on, let me go get some oils. And he's, he's still up there shaking. By the time the little girl looked and peeped at the door one more time, he said, hey, get him from here. She done ran back into the room. Because he don't like children for some reason. He, the children give him a bad memory. He think that he ain't going to be able to make no noises or no sounds or no. <clears throat> he think that they're going to interrupt. Now. <clears throat> now. His, she comes in. And she said, I'm going to step on your back. He said, oh, wait, 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 uh, wait. You, you want to step on my back? She said, why your voice changed like that? He said, nah, my voice ain't changed. I just had a flashback. I had came from somebody, stepped on my back. That's what happened to my voice. There was an increase in velocity in the gluten. The gluten level went up. My gluten level went up 
when they stepped on my back. That's what happened. There was a security over on the right hand side. There was somebody's security on the right hand side. And as a result of that, you know, I felt like. You know, so he explained the whole story to her. She said, oh. She said, well, I'm going to step on your back and, and I'm going to do some." He said, wait, 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 wait. you going to step on my back? She said, well, your voice changed again. He said, no, no, I, I, what, what, no, I'm not talking about that. You going to step on my back or what? She go, she steps on his back. When she steps on it back, it cracked. She stepped on it, then she jumped up in the air, then she sat on his back. <laughs> So he was like, oh, oh, what? So, so he have it. He. <laughs> before, before he could catch her stepping on the back, she done sat down on his back. So it's like two for one. He couldn't handle it. Now. <laughs> so, so, so she, so. So, so, <laughs> so there was, <laughs> there was two screams. <laughs> there was, <laughs> there was two screams that took place. Cause when she's, <laughs> when she's step, <laughs> so. <laughs> When she stepped on his back, then she she, she sat down afterwards. So, 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 when she stepped on him, it's uh oh. So his hands were stretched out on the bed. He he thought that he was paralyzed. He thought that he was paralyzed. Now here's the thing. <laughs> he was used to somebody. Stepping on his back and he still would be in pain. But she stepped on it and then sat down. All right. While his arms are stretched out, his mind is telling him that he in pain. But sur surely, but sh slowly, but surely, he began to look and he realized that he can move his back. And he get up real slow. And he realized that his back is good. And slowly but surely, he he trying to move around to see if it's going to work. Then all of a sudden, he just up in there to dance. <laughs> he Jerome in the house. Guess what? He had a new tune. Now look at this. When it's all said and done, he's shocked. Because she did something for him. Now she has gained a part in his mind that he has been looking for. Saints. Now she's moving in favor with him. Because she just did something that aroused his happiness, gave him a solution, and solved the issue that nobody could solve. See, saints, it was this that unlocked her favor. Five years later, he said, baby, baby, I'm having back pain. She said, well, pray. And said, but you can't do this. I'm about, I don't know. I'm trying to. You need to pray more. Ain't you supposed to be a man of God? Pray about this. Shoot, I got stuff I need to do. You can't, you can't make me. I need stuff I need to fulfill. Nigga, shut up. All right. I. Now she got the Elmo voice. I ain't going to keep on telling you again. You need to pray about this. I mean, I mean, I mean. You need to pray about this. Bye. 
Look, look, look. She forgot. That's what brought her favor in the first place. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Favor is deceitful. Is deceitful. This is why so many people have lost favor with Prophet Joshua Holmes. I can't even talk with him no more. If I see them, it'll be complete strength. I don't even want to see him. Since I got this saying, when 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 God disconnect people from my life, I I, done, I had done disconnect from them like weeks ago. Like I don't follow them. It's just I'm done. And I, I can't say nothing to them. You understand? Because if you change what brings God's favor on your life, the favor will leave you. It will leave you. Samuel told Saul, come up to the mountain with me. He came. Samuel told Saul, you're going to meet prophets prophesying. He went. Prophets were prophesying. Samuel told him, hey, you're going to find out where your donkey is. He found out where his donkey is. He went everywhere that Samuel told him to go. Then when Samuel said, kill out the Amalekites, he didn't do it. He had the favor not because he was tall, not because he was Saul. He had the favor because he was listening to whatever Samuel told him to do. When he stopped listening, God stopped talking. God stopped favoring God stop blessing. What I'm telling you is costly information. You know why it's costly? Because I'm preparing you for life. If you stop doing what you know God likes from you, don't be shocked when God stop talking to you. Don't be shocked when God wants nothing to do with you. We can't use that scripture. Oh, he'll never leave us nor forsake us because that's a contract. If you break your side of the contract, he don't got to fulfill the side of his contract. The Bible says that there's blessings for obedience. There's curses for disobedience. So if we choose to go against what he's telling us, he not in the wrong if he choose to fulfill what we chose. Because there's a consequence for our decisions. And he already told us the wages for sin is death. What is death? It is separation from God before your body get detached. From your spirit <clears throat> is separation from God. So the Bible already told us that the wages for sin is death. So watch this. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. Okay, I sinned. Okay, but now I stepped into a different payment. Because as long as I'm obeying God, I'm in the payment of he'll never leave me nor forsake me. But when I sin, I step into the payment of death. Oh, Jesus. And death is separation from God. So what my decision has canceled out this promise from being active in my life. And this is why we got so many people in hell. You know how many people in hell that know the Bible? Go down there to hell right now. And you say, John chapter 3 verse 16. God so loved the, he loved the world he, that he gave his only. He gave his only because he, don't bite me in my scalp. Don't bite my scalp. That he gave his only begotten son. Don't bite my scalp again, please. They know scriptures down there. And these were people that stopped doing what God loved. These were people that stopped following the rudiment, the, 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 the pattern of what brought them favor with God. You know what Jesus loved about Abraham? He left his father's house. He had a demeanor about him of, Lord, I love you so much, I'll leave anything for you. So watch this. I'm going to shock you. You never heard this a day in your life. So here's what God does. God say, let me see if I can still favor him. I need to do something similar. 
I need to do something in that same bracket because I want to give him another level of favor. But I need to see if he's still consistent, if he's still got that same heart. So God said, I'm about to give you a son. You're about to have a son. And he's all excited. He gets the son. God say, offer up your son. Which meant in that time, kill your son. Cut them off. Slaughter them on the altar, on the mountain. Look what Abraham do. Come on, son. Let's go. Watch. He's not stopping what brought him favor. Oh, Jesus. He's not stopping what brought him favor. He knows that the favor of God was unlocked because he was able to leave his father's house. He was able to leave his bloodline, his family and those that were a uh, part of his childhood. So now. He's increasing in what he did to unlock the favor. Watch what happens. He goes while he's there. His son says, Dad, where's the sacrifice? Come on, son. He pissed the son on the thing, ties up his son, pits the rope on his son, gets the axe ready, got the fire set, got everything set, and he's about to strike, and the angel says, Abraham! Abraham had to make sure he didn't cut himself, because when he pulled back, his arm was a little, you know, it was a little, it wasn't as sturdy. You know, he had shaky hand. It wasn't as sturdy, so he had to had to be careful. His hand wasn't as sturdy. You know, shaky hand. You ever had somebody pour juice for you and their hand was shaky? You, to... you done spilled the juice. Can you go pour some more juice in? Because the thing that you just spilled uh, was the very same thing that just fell out. Could you go... God said, now I know that you trust me, you love me. Now I know. Because you're not going to change what brought you favor. You're just going to increase it. You're not going to stop doing what made me even look at you. You're going to keep on increasing in that quality in that behavior, in that characteristics. Saints, I'm going to say something to you and some of y'all will catch this. You know what Jesus love about me? My ability to receive and translate his rawness without shame. That's something that Jesus love about me. That's one of the characteristics he love about me. The ability to receive his rawness. If Jesus say something, because Jesus have said some stuff to me, boy. Uh, yeah, he said some stuff to me. <laughs> Shake some of y'all up. He have said some stuff to me that are super shocking. And I was able to take it. There was no issue with what he was telling me. I didn't fight him. I didn't say, Lord, wow, is this you? I flowed with him because he can be himself around me. I'm still the same way. I don't stop doing what Jesus like. I increase doing what Jesus like. Sons and daughters, may I tell you, is this is the key to walking in tsunami of riches. Keep on doing what Jesus likes. When you pleasure Jesus, 
you release the gusher of money into your life. Money cometh is connected to bringing Jesus pleasure. If I could tell you the secret of how to unlock a money flow in your life that will be legendary and historical, it's by pleasing Jesus. You don't got to do all the stuff that the world is doing. If you learn how to please Jesus, you'll have everything that you want in this life. Saints, the king that I am, the ruler that I am, I sit in my car today and still ask Jesus, what could I do more to please you? What could I do more to make you happy? Ain't got nothing to do with people. My favor will never be lost because I'm willing to increase whatever he likes. And here's where I'm at with mine. If you can't get it from your other sons and daughters, I'll increase my plate so that you can enjoy it. I, I'll add it on to my plate so that you can enjoy it. If you can't get the loyalty from other sons and daughters, I'll increase it so that you can get it from me. I'll substitute the lackage. <laughs> That's my word now. The lackage of what they're not producing. If you can't get the pleasure, I'll increase the pleasure that they're not giving to you. You was created to make Jesus happy. That's what unlocks your money. Sometimes you up there asking Jesus to get from that job, but the fact that you in that job, it makes Jesus happy. Why don't you think he won't change every time you pray for deliverance? He lets you stay right there because Jesus like you at that job because have you ever thought that you are the only born again, Holy Ghost filled, blood covenant, child of God in that atmosphere, in that building? You talking about these witches talking about me and they plotting against me. But that's why Jesus put you there because you the only Holy Ghost filled person up and down. You the only person full of the spirit. You the only person that fear God. You the only person that love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. You the only one that put your life on the line to make sure that God's heart is satisfied with humanity. He'll look at you, Noah, and say, I see you, Noah. I see you, Noah. I may not be able to see everybody else, but Noah, I see you. And if I see you, I'll destroy this earth with water, but I'll create an ark. God did not create the ark because he wanted to create something. He created the ark because of Noah. Noah created the idea of the ark in God's mind. Because God said there's somebody on the earth that's making me happy. So I can't let him be a part of the judgment that I'm about to release. I can't let him be a part of the anger that I'm about to display. The wrath I'm about to demonstrate. The hatred that I'm about to release. Because this is not for him. I'm going to love on him. I'm going to protect him. I'm going to preserve him and put the blessing on him. What? God said, I'm going to put the blessing on him. I'm not going to let him have the same judgment that's hitting everybody else. I'm going to put the blessing on him. I'm going to put wealth on him. I'm going to put finances on him. I'm going to put glory on him. I'm going to make you live in fruitfulness and multiplication. That's what God did. God made the ark just for Noah. And then watch, Noah made God so happy that Noah said, hey, Noah, who make you happy? Oh, this powerful. Look what God did. Noah, 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 who, who make you happy? Huh? Who make you feel good, Noah? And, and he, he read Noah's heart. Noah said, I love my children. I love their wives. I, I, I wish that they could make it with me. God said, done. He read his thoughts. He, he, he read his thoughts 
And here's what God did. God picked the ark as a reward for them as well. And say, y'all get to come in the same ark. I'm going to let y'all live in this ark because you made up in your mind. You was going, Noah, you was going to please me and make me happy. So I'm going to let you bring with you who please you and make you happy. I'm going to let them have, I'm going to let you have them with you. I, I, I'm going to let them be in the same place with you. Listen, do you understand that Noah didn't stop there. The Bible said he came out of the ark and he began to sow it unto God. Listen, the Bible said he built an altar. So what is he doing? He's saying, I'm not going to stop what brought me favor. I'm not going to stop what made you look at me. I'm going to build a whole altar. And this altar is where I'm going to keep on increasing what makes you feel good. I'm going to increase what gives you pleasure. And he kept on sowing and sowing and sowing. And he healed the heart of God. And God said, I'm not going to curse the ground no more. I'm not going to curse the ground no more. I ain't going to do none of that. Because of you, I'm not going to fill the earth with a flood. The rainbow was created by the sea. Noah birthed God's rainbow. If you look in Revelation, there's a rainbow around the throne. Which shows you that sowing seed unlocks the throne of God over your finances. Because there's a throne where the rainbow is around the throne of God. And the sowing of Noah made the rainbow show up. Which shows you that you unlock heaven on earth when you sow. You unlock the throne of God on your money. Lock God's hand on your hand and you produce wealth. You produce abundance. You produce increase. You produce more than enough. See, here's the wild thing about soul. That you got a natural hand. But when you put a seed in it, your hand becomes supernatural. So you receive a creative miracle of the supernatural hand of God on yours. So now you have authority to create the very same thing that you desire from God. That's why Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and on say that you'll make your way prosperous. Because God created and made the world with his hands, with his mouth. So now your hands, your mouth has making abilities. Your hand has making anointing. You make money move. You make jobs open up for you. You make favor surround you. You make deliverance take place. You make love. 